Oh my gosh, you guys. I'm sorry, what is that? Look at that hairball. I'm a mammal, let me live. Have I actually been doing this for nine months now? What month is it? It's August. Wait, it's September. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel and welcome to a video that honestly nine months ago I didn't even think I would ever be making because I truly and really had no idea how wavy how curly my hair Actually was I spent the last nine months on this curly hair journey and now my friends for those of you watching like why do you call it a journey if you have been on this journey you understand why we call it a journey because on some days I'm like feeling myself I'm like ooh I look cute these curls are popping and on other days I'm about to just pull out a razor and shave my whole head and if you have been on this journey you know that I am not exaggerating at all so about nine months ago for really just for fun for a video on this channel I revealed what I look like totally naturally no makeup no blow dryers nothing and honestly I realized like wow my hair is like pretty wavy and then I went into a wormhole where I discovered the curly hair community on YouTube and beyond and I was totally mind blown so I thought hey why don't I just like see if it works because I should also mention that I had been damaging my hair so severely for so many years that around the same time, nine months ago, my hairstylist told me that if I did not seriously get it together, I was going to have to like cut off all my hair. So I was like, you know what? I'm open to anything. And that is when the journey started. So before I jump in to the routine that I'm currently using that is really working for me, let me just say a few things. Right now in this video, I'm going to be totally and completely honest with all of you. This video is not sponsored by anyone, so all the things I'm about to say are things that are truly and actually working for me. I'm also gonna tell you guys what I think is like not worth it. What things I'm not doing that yes, I have tried. So we're gonna play a little game of yes, it's worth the hype or no, it's not worth the hype. I also wanna give a disclaimer that I'm very much still in the throngs of this journey. I'm still learning. I think I always will be learning. At least that's what I've realized at this point. So also no, I'm not a professional. You should do what works for you and everybody's hair is so much different, but I just wanna like share the wealth of knowledge of what I have learned in the past nine months of birthing this baby. And last thing before we jump into the routine, I also want to say a massive thank you to the curly hair community who has been so kind and embracing me. I read all the comments and I have gotten so much feedback, amazing tips, amazing help. I had the opportunity to go to the Diva Curl Salon in New York. I also had the opportunity to get a Diva cut. So is going to the Diva Curl Salon to learn how to style your hair worth the hype? Yes. Is getting a diva cut worth the hype? Absolutely yes. Felicia, you changed my life. And is being a part of the curly community, of the wavy hair community, worth the hype? freaking Luli. I have met some of the coolest people on this journey. I mean, India Batson came over to my house when I was a total stranger just to actually help me learn how to do my hair. And if that's not friendship, I don't know what is. So I hope you guys like this video. Here's my new routine. Here's what I'm doing on this journey right now. And I really, really hope that it helps you. Okay, so I washed off my makeup because last time I did a video in the shower, y'all told me I looked like Momo at the end of it because I had makeup all over my face. And I have to say, I actually kind of agreed. So I'm about to hop in the shower and show you guys what my new routine is and also what I think is worth the hype and what I think you should just say peace out to. Okay, so first things first, I need to talk about good products. I've always been a person who's like, no, that's not worth the money. I'm just gonna use X, Y, and Z that's super cheap or on sale or whatever and honestly that's great you know I love a good sale and some of the products I have been using are actually very affordable the first shampoo and conditioner that I ever used were Cantu brand I'm gonna link to all of this stuff in the info section below I 
I really liked Cantu. Some of you guys have some critiques that it dries your hair out a lot. The other shampoos that I highly recommend would be Oribe. It's, it's definitely a financial investment, but I only wash my hair like once a week, so it's truly something that I don't mind spending a little money on. I also love the brand DP Hue. This is also what I use to color my hair at home, this brand. Really gentle, really conditioning. Then I want to talk a little bit about deep conditioning. Another thing that I was like, not worth the money, not worth the hype, but guess what? I was freaking wrong because when you have curly or wavy hair, it is so crucial and so important to do a deep condition. I would say like once a week. The ones that I've really been using are Pros, which this is a brand that I worked with on a sponsorship deal, but I am buying everything they're selling. I think they're amazing. This is actually a pre-shampoo mask, which I thought was fascinating. You put this on before you shampoo your hair, and I cannot tell you how amazed I was by the drastic difference in my hair. The other one I love is from Oribe, and another one I've heard great things about as well and has awesome Amazon reviews is Arbazalia, which is a hydrating argon oil mask. All right, so without further ado, I'm going to hop into my routine. First things first, take my hair out and wet my hair. Something I think is absolutely not worth the hype, although I get it, it probably is better for your hair, is cold water. I'm so sorry I've tried this. I'm not willing to put my life on the line. I know that's a little dramatic. I'm just not willing to like lower the quality of my shower so much that when I get out, I am freezing for an hour just so that my hair follicles are totally closed. I know, judge me if you want to, but for me, not worth the hype, I'm sorry. Alrighty, so now as you can see, my hair is totally sopping wet. Major bonus from doing this curly hair journey is that my hair has never been longer and has never been healthier. Look how long it is. No extensions, guys. I grew that myself. So I'm gonna start with the shampoo. Today I'm going to use the Oribe shampoo just for consistency. That's what I've been using lately. I've actually learned a lot about how specifically to shampoo your hair. For years, I was really just using too much. That's about how much I use now. And a lesson that I learned from you all, and especially from India Bastin, is that you do not, under any circumstances, shampoo the ends of your hair. It's, it's not like your hair is gonna fall out or anything. What it does is it just kind of like dries out your hair. So so this has become something I've really had to learn how to do, is to get in there and shampoo my hair from the root, from the root. Yes, I know how to speak correctly. Which actually means that sometimes when I get to the back of my hair, this is why I don't take my shampoo at the beginning, I have to go in and add more underneath, like so. I definitely am not purposefully putting shampoo on the ends of my hair. I also really enjoy washing my hair now because like I said, I do it pretty infrequently. I enjoy doing it, so I like to give myself a great scalp massage. And I do think that this helps to promote hair growth. And this is something I've become obsessed with. This is super high ranked on Amazon. It's very inexpensive, less than $10. And I think that this helps me kind of to get the shampoo in there. And even if you're not like a curly haired person, I don't care how long your hair is. I don't care if you even have hair. You could be totally bald and this thing feels, wow, that feels, I mean, that feels great. That's like a muscle relief. So you just get in there, really shampoo it up, make sure you get the shampoo everywhere. See, you can see there's, if there's no shampoo down here. Then when I rinse my hair, the shampoo will naturally come out and clean the ends of the hair. Which I thought, again, like, LOL, absolutely not. Guess what? Worth the hype. All right, shampoo is out of my hair. And now it's time to apply conditioner. And this is one of the areas where I feel like application is truly everything. It is worth the hype. So I'm gonna use this Oribe. This is the Gold Lux Repair Restore Conditioner. And I kinda use a lot, guys. I have very fine hair, so it's important that I find products that are good for my hair don't weigh it down too much and that can be washed out pretty easily. So it's all about this prayer hand. For me, this is what really works to help lock the products into my hair. Again, I'm not an expert. I'm very well aware of that. This is what I found that nine months in has really been working for me. So take your hands like this once you have the product on there. And really, you don't wanna go all the way to the top. You just wanna go like mid length and down. And then I come over here and do the same thing, just like so, to really like, lock it in and hopefully close the follicle and this is where things start getting crazy and this is something anyone on curly journey 
definitely understands. Look at the amount of hair. Look at all of this hair, guys. This is like not even a lot. This is something probably a lot of you guys understand if you're on a curly or a wavy journey. Since you don't brush or comb your hair, it like only comes out in the shower. Oh my gosh, you guys. I'm sorry, what is that? Look at that hairball. I'm a mammal, let me live. So what I do is I do the prayer hands, then I grab my wide tooth comb, which again, very inexpensive, just from Amazon. I start at the bottom and just comb it in. Oh my gosh, you guys, there's already so much hair all over my shower. Oh my gosh, there's so much hair. This is crazy. But it does feel really good to comb my hair. Some people actually recommend that you don't comb your hair at all. I think you just have to figure out what works for you. For me, I, I like combing my hair. I think it's more of anything than like a sensory thing that I just like, like the way it feels on my head. Do you see all of that? I'm sorry, I know this is probably grossing some of you out. This is just reality. Okay, so once I've done that, then I do one of my favorites, squish to condish. I didn't make that up. I learned it from you guys, I learned it from India. And this is where you start to see like the curls come to life. And I feel like this also helps the product kind of lock in. Even though this is conditioner, I'm definitely going to wash it out. That's what we call squish. Chicken dish. Okay, so now I'm gonna rinse out the conditioner. Some people recommend that you do this with your head upside down. So sorry, for me, that's not worth the hype. I'm not doing it. It's just like I get dizzy, it's too much, my hair's in my face. I'm already, do you see how much hair I'm already covered in, guys? Like, I, I can't do anymore. So I'm going to rinse out the conditioner and go from there. So all the product is out of my hair. As you can see, my body and my hair are still absolutely sopping wet. This is one for some of you and sometimes for myself, I would recommend putting in a conditioner, a leave-in conditioner. I was putting in a leave-in conditioner for a long time and I really enjoyed it. I think it was really great for my hair, but my hair is very fine, which means if I put a lot of product in it, it really weighs it down and you can really like see the product. And for me, my main priority is really volume. That's what I want in my hair. Not necessarily for every curl to be totally uniform. I love the leave-in conditioner from Mixed Chicks. And I only really have to use a little bit, but I've kind of been backing off of that for summer. I'm going for like a little bit more of like a wild boho curl these days. But here's what I do recommend. And I'm about to get real, real with y'all. This whole thing about only using a microfiber towel on your hair is actually worth the hype. If there's anything that's worth the hype, it is this. Do not, under any circumstances, get a terry cloth towel anywhere near your hair. That is like the cardinal rule. If you don't have a microfiber towel, this one I got from Ulta, but you can get them on Amazon, I recommend using an old worn-in t-shirt. So I'm just gonna show you how I put my hair up with a t-shirt. Again, some people say, just let your hair dry natural, do not touch it to anything. For me, I just don't have time for that. So what I'm gonna do, put my head upside down, and then I take the whole shirt, the opening of it, like where your body would go. You see what I'm doing? I put my whole head inside of it, and then I just very loosely, very, very loosely twist it, honestly, just so it'll stay on my head. I don't do the whole like wringing my hair out because I feel like that messes with the follicle, that messes with your hair. I will say, I'm buying what these people are selling with the microfiber towel thing, but an old t-shirt does the exact same trick. Okay, so now I'm gonna get out of the shower and while I get dressed and like moisturize my face and do my skincare routine, etc., I'm just gonna leave my hair exactly like this. Sometimes I'll put product in my hair immediately when I get out of the shower, but because that's not my constant routine, I'm not gonna do that today. But wait, I lied really quick before I get out of the shower. I just have to show this to you guys because I feel like it's one of the most relatable things for curly, wavy haired girls. Look at all of the hair in my shower. Honestly, but wait for it. Ew! I really recommend you guys get one of these little tub covers. Um, this has been a game changer and my tub has not gotten clogged in a really long time. Oh, but wait, lest we forget, gotta clean out the comb still. All right, so I have made it out of the shower successfully, which is a journey in and of itself because with all this wet hair, it can sometimes get a little slippery. So like I said, I do not typically apply products to sopping wet hair. It is just not 
worth the hype. I like to let my hair dry a little bit. I've also had moments where I'm into plopping. Don't Google it. I've had moments when I'm into that, which is where I'll put in the products, then put like a bonnet or a t-shirt or something back on just to let my curls sit. But because I'm being honest with you guys about what my routine actually is and not some like extensive thing that I don't do every day, I want to let you know, I don't do that. What I do is I get out of the shower, I have my towel on or my t-shirt, I get out, I kind of shake it out. Like I said, for me, volume is a big thing. And as you can see, the hair comes to life so, so well. And I have to credit that to two things. A, amazing products, and B, the haircut that I got from Felicia. Major, major game changer. I just saw all of my hair really lift as a result of getting a cut. Here's the crazy thing, guys, what I'm about to tell you. I actually only typically use two products in my hair. The first one is like a styler, and the other is a gel, and that is it. That's what I use on a daily basis, unless it's like day two, three, four, and five, in which case I'm a huge fan of the Diva Curl Curl Refresher. And I also like the We Dodd Bot Botanical Boost. The Diva Curl Refresher has been a major game changer for me. And I think this is totally, totally worth it. I use it all the time and it's not even halfway gone. Okay guys, so here's my routine. I get out of the shower. I'd give it a little scrunch, not too much. I know you're not supposed to touch your hair. I do still have an ongoing issue with that. The brands that I really do love using are Not Your Mother's, super inexpensive, India Batson introduced me to these. So what I'm gonna use first is a defining cream. I put this on first, take them out, not too, too much. It's better to start with too little. And then here's the weird thing. I actually apply it, like lay it on to the hair, which for me was really weird because when I first started doing this, I thought like, oh, isn't this gonna flatten out the curls? For me, what it does is it really just like gets in the follicle. Do I sound like I know what I'm talking about? Because honestly, like I said, I'm still learning. And usually I like to pick my part first, otherwise it picks me and we know what a tragedy that can be. I mean, I already look like Weird Al or Howard Stern or a plethora of other men. I'm really just doing what I can to try to look like a female at this point. So then the second product I use is always a gel. I'll use either like a Diva Curl gel, which I love Diva Curl. I have the Not Your Mother's. I also absolutely love, I think it's Gelé from Oribe. But for the purposes of this video today, I'm going to use the Diva Curl Believe In, which I don't know if it's technically a gel or not. And what I do is I kind of just like layer it on and then scrunch it up a little bit. Same thing over here, kind of just everywhere. I also really like to get it in here at the front of my hair. Otherwise the flyaways are just way too out of control for me. The thing is, you don't wanna overdo it with product if you have fine hair because we all know that it just looks like too crunchy, too weird. And then you guys, I kid you not, that's basically all I do. I have to say that before I started this curly hair journey, I was all about blow drying. I was even all about diffusing when I first started this journey just because I don't like to leave the house with wet hair. But if there's one thing I've learned when people talk about the importance of air drying your hair, guess what? It's not a lie. I believe that when my hair just air dries slowly, it looks a million times better. To plus it up even a little bit more, what I'll do if I have time is I'll take a bunch of these curls that are in the front and pin curl them, which is basically where you wrap it around your finger just like so and pin it down to your head. And when I tell you guys I have the craziest boingers of all time after that, I am absolutely not kidding. While I let my hair air dry, I'm gonna add a bunch of pin curls to the front of my hair and let it dry and then check back in with you guys. Okay, so as you can see, my hair is still drying. It is honestly such a journey in and of itself for me to not touch my hair. I'm so used to touching it. I put in a bunch of pin curls up top and what I really learned when I went to the Diva Curl Salon was that you wanna kinda like lift the curls with some of these pin curl holders, like they're bigger than bobby pins. It helps to give your hair more volume. I leave my hair like this for a long time, like until it's dry and I have no shame so right now I'm gonna go run some errands like this because like who cares I'm probably never gonna see any of these people again anyways this is LA so when I come back I'm assuming my hair will be done and we'll finish this whole routine so I've just returned home from running a few errands and yes I know I touched
touch my hair again. It's so hard for me, you guys. My hair is pretty much almost basically dry. And when I mentioned what a game changer the haircut was, I think things like this are a great example. Normally, this hair piece would be a lot longer, but when you get a diva cut or go to someone who knows what they're doing with curly hair, they really know how to shape your face and your curls to be optimized. So like I said, I put in all the pin curls. Right now, I'm gonna take them out and you guys are gonna see how wild my hair truly looks. Look at that guy. That's crazy. And as you would imagine, because my hair is curly or wavy, my hair takes curl incredibly well. So these will calm down throughout the day. Kind of like pull on it a little. I mean, oh my gosh. <laughs> these are great. Totally dry, very, very little product, like I mentioned. So now I have these curly bangs. <laughs> what I like to do next is kind of just give my hair a little bit of volume. Sometimes I'll even go in with like a dry shampoo or some sort of texturizing spray just to give my hair a little boost because like I said, for me, the biggest thing really is volume. So what I'll do is just kind of like go in, separate it. I don't think a lot of curly haired people do this, but for me, it works. And like a lot of the hairstylists I work with will do stuff like this when I'm on shoots. I love Living Proof's texturizer, by the way. It's probably my favorite. Now I just kind of like go in, pull the curls down. Like I said, they need a little time to like chill out. I'm gonna put my head upside down and shake it out. Get ready, you guys. It's about to get crazy. Without further ado, three, two, one. Wow. You guys, look at this hair. So I'm obviously still on the journey because some days it looks amazing and other days I'm like, what is going on? I do like a little bit of frizz because I don't mind having like that boho, just wild kind of look. But if I want to calm it down, I'll use this DP Hue oil just a little bit, barely any because my hair is so fine and I just kind of like lay it on top. Just like pat it almost, just to make it ever so much less frizzy. And voila, just like that, my hair is finished. And I think this looks pretty good for day one hair because anybody out there watching who is on a journey like me knows that day one hair can be pretty challenging. I think usually my best hair days are like two and three three, four and five are where things get like, basically it's time to put on a hat. A few more things I wanna share with you guys that I think are either worth or not worth the hype. First off, silk pillowcase. Maybe not totally worth the hype, but I've been doing it and I haven't noticed a huge difference, but it's pretty inexpensive, so I say go for it. I have not been doing a bonnet or any sort of scarf on my head because I've noticed it really doesn't do much for me and it usually falls off in the middle of the night. Definitely not doing it right. The things that I have noticed that I'm a huge fan of, pineappling your hair at night when you go to bed in a silk scrunchie. Very important that it's silk or velvet, a material that's not going to dent your hair or cause the curls to get frizzy. I pull the pony all the way up to the front of my head and when I wake up in the morning, it looks pretty incredible. You guys, that's all I have to share with you as of now. That's where I'm at nine months into this journey. Who knows where I'm gonna be a year from now, but I'm gonna keep learning and growing. So if you have any tips or tricks up your sleeve that I have not tried, please leave them in the comments. Also, I just wanna say for any of you guys who found me and found my channel and have been supporting and subscribing and getting the notifications and all of the things because of this curly hair journey. Thank you so much. This is something I never anticipated and it's kind of wild where life takes you when you let your hair take the lead because like I said, it owns me at this point. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you're new and please keep hanging out because we got a lot more coming at ya. This is actually a pre-shampoo mask, which I thought was fascinating. You see what I'm doing? I put my whole head inside of it. I get out, I kind of shake it out. It is honestly such a journey in and of itself for me to not touch my hair. I'm so used to touching it.